I'm going to introduce you to our next project. We're going to do a package design. We're going to go through the entire process in detail, including sizing, exporting final files, how to apply it on a mock-up. We're going to use a couple of different methods to do that. Uh, we have two different kind of options here we're going to explore. We may even have time to do a backside as well. I want this to be a complete project so you can learn a lot as we move through this. So one of the first things we want to do to complete this package design is find a great product photo. And there are a lot of great resources and free photo websites you can go to to download lots of different product photos. I had a hard time finding the perfect chocolate chip cookie one, but I did find a photo. I'll put that in the resource guide. It has all the links to all the photos you'll need in the class. So you can find those, but please feel free to use your own product. It could be a cracker. It could be something else for your own product design. I want it to be a little bit different than mine, or you can replicate and move through mine if you want to really go step by step and learn the process. So one of the first things we do for any package design is edit and finalize our product photo. So our product is going to be a chocolate chip. It's going to be a mint chocolate chip. So I downloaded mint leaves. So I'm going to hop into Adobe Photoshop. We're going to start out in Photoshop because we're going to really focus on that editing. I have this stack of chocolate chip cookies and this bunch of mint, which we're going to find a way to isolate and select the mint leaves we think would be good because that's a lot of mint leaves. So Here's what we want to do is we want to focus the product is a mint chocolate chip cookie. So we want to have a little sprig of mint to show that this product is a little bit special and not just a regular plain chocolate chip cookie. So let's first cut out our photo. There's lots of different ways to cut things out in Photoshop. So we'll get to that in a minute. If you've taken my Photoshop editing and manipulation masterclass, you'll be right at home. You can go ahead and skip through some of these different ways to cut objects out. If you're not familiar with all the different ways I would approach cutting this out, um, hang tight. We're going to go over that. So I'm going to go ahead and double click, unlock our little layer here. So now we can go ahead and be able to cut this out. So I have a newer version of Photoshop, the Photoshop 2019. So I have a nice handy new tool I can do up here in the select portion. I'm going to go down to select. I'm going to go down to subject matter. And so it's going to automatically use an algorithm to find the subject matter. And sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't, but I always try it first because look at that. It's not too bad of a selection, really not bad. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. We're going to have to fine tune this even further. There's another method you can use. Then if I didn't, if it didn't select it really good, the next tool I would rely on is my magnetic lasso tool. I would click kind of go around. This seems to actually be making a little bit better of a selection. And sometimes when you have a blurry background, so you notice it's a little blurry right there where the photo was taken because the way the lens is being used there, it makes it a little bit harder to cut out uh, items because the, the computer is not knowing where the, the background ends and the cookie begins. So a lot of times when I look for photos, I'll try to avoid the ones that have a lot of blurring on the edges. And in some case, in this case, I just couldn't find a really great free to use chocolate chip cookie photo. So I had to make do with this one, but that's okay. We're going to be able to sharpen those selections in a little bit. So I went ahead and used this method and now we're going to be able to fine tune our selection. So let's go ahead and take a couple things we can do here. So sometimes you use the magnetic lasso tool and you have that little bit of a blurry background, it is hard to kind of get the computer to do that for you. A lot of times I'll then, if I have a lot of curves, I'll use the pen tool to make my selection. I love the pen tool. I use it a lot in Adobe Illustrator. I'm already very comfortable with it. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and use the pen tool. I'm going to go ahead and click, and then I'm going to click again and hold and make kind of a little bit of a curve shape. Click and hold, and I'm going to go ahead and complete my shape. I'm going to add to that selection. So what we want to do is when we complete a shape with the pen tool, we're going to right click and we're going to go down to make a selection. And here's the key here. We don't want to make a new selection because then it'll ignore the selection we already have. We want to add to the selection, click on OK, and it just added it right there, a nice smooth curve. That would be almost impossible to do with a polygon lasso or the lasso tools. So we could take the polygon lasso tools as another way to add. We want to add, so we want to add to our selection. This is going to be addition to our selection, and this is going to be subtraction. So some of this may be basic for you, but just for those who do not know, I'm just going to go over kind of the basic tools at first, and then not do that as much. 
but you could do this as well. It's going to make a little bit more of a sharper edge, just like that. But that's why I like the pen tool a little bit better because I can smooth out my selection. So I can go back down to the pen tool. So many different ways to cut things out. There's not really a wrong way. There's usually just easier ways. So there's a little dip there. So I'm going to get that nice curve there. And instead of adding to the selection, I want to subtract it, right? Because I don't want to add that to it. I want to subtract that right in there. So I'm going to right click and just do the same thing. Go down to make a selection and we are going to subtract from the selection. Click OK and there it subtracted it. Let's do this a couple more times for practice. Let's go ahead and subtract that out right there. Just that little bit. I'm going to start going a little bit faster and subtract. Boom. I just love the pen tool for cutting out objects. I feel like it's way more accurate um, if some of the other tools don't work for you, like select, select subject. It's just clicking and holding. We'll get to use the pen tool a lot in Adobe Illustrator. So you get this works the same way in Adobe Photoshop. Go down to make a selection, subtract. Just have to remember if you want to subtract or add. That's the only key to all this. Nice smooth selections. We want to add that time. So make a selection and then add to the selection. Boom. So I'm going to continue to do this. I think we've kind of done enough examples to show you. I'm going to go ahead and finish doing the rest of this, making a nice smooth selection, especially these little blurry areas of the photo. If we don't make a nice smooth selection, it looks really fake and it looks like it was cut out a little too rough. We want to make a nice smooth natural selection. So I'm pretty happy with that selection. I'm going to copy. I'm going to do Command C shortcut and Command V copy. Or you can go up to edit and do it manually, copy and paste. So now I have my separate layer. I'm going to go ahead and delete or at least make it not visible anymore so I can really focus on this. I can always see how good my selection is by creating a new layer. And I usually like to use red as long as the photo doesn't have a lot of red in it. And I'm just going to drag this as a lower layer, kind of see how my selection was. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. There's little things you can always go in and do and take the eraser tool and fine tune that selection, but I'm pretty happy with it. There is some blurring that happened that I had to crop out kind of some sharp edges out of those blurred lines, but I think because the photo was fairly blurry, it did a pretty good job. I'm just going to go down here and look at little details. Uh, this looks a little unnatural, so I can either take the pen tool and cut that off, or I can take the eraser tool and kind of do just a little bit of trimming and softening of the edges. This is being picky because when you have a package design, you got to be a little bit picky because it's going to be pretty big on the product. So you want to spend a lot of time really making it nice because that photo is going to be the main attraction of this package design. We want to make sure it doesn't look fake or not cut out very well. So we got to be very good about making sure everything looks pretty good. Any sharp edges are smoothed out softening that, reducing the size of the eraser tool, and just going in, just softening just a little bit. You don't want to soften so much that it doesn't match the rest of the cutout. Just little things. So when I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and have that as our cookie. And so now what we need to do is add a little sprig of mint. So how are we going to do that? We have this mint photo here. You can use any mint photo you want. You don't have to use this one. Um, so what we want is we just want a sprig of mint. We don't want this big bunch. So what we're going to do is we're going to be cutting out and isolating a section of this mint so that we could put it on top of the cookie. 